So social media in a nutshell. Now, some of you here, um, you do know me. So I am going to introduce myself, but some of you, I know that you do know this already. So um, apologies. So today we're going to look at social media and it is social media in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to try and stay, make sure we stick to an hour. It is late here in the UK. Um, and some of you are doing social media and you're doing it great. And today is really going to be a reminder to keep you on track because I think all of us as entrepreneurs get distracted a lot by shiny object syndrome and starting to just veer off doing different things because we're so hungry to reach our goals and to get more of a following, get more leads and get more sales and essentially make more profit. Um, so what we're going to look at today is everything you need to know around social media um, in its entirety. But obviously, for me to go in depth, let's face it, I would need the whole day. Um, so who am I? For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Natalia Nicholson. Um, I'm a Google certified digital marketing coach. And what does that even mean? You know, we've all got an authority and we can use big brands. But what that actually means is that I consulted and coached um, small businesses on behalf of Google for two years, really helping businesses come into the digital age and teaching them um, how to use social media, how to use display advertising, and really how to find their customers online, make themselves more visible, their brand more vid um, visible, and really work with them to essentially become more viable and get their businesses profitable. Um, not only have I done it for Google, I've also done it for BT Work Ready, working with solopreneurs, freelancers to really get their businesses profitable, to use strategy to really be able to get ahead, because many times, um, in this world, we can get into a lot of communities, we can get into a lot of programs, mentoring and coaching, and it's so high level that we can get lost in it, and it doesn't really give us a clear path. I've done this for non-profit organisation, public sector, London boroughs, of working with businesses. So not only have I failed my way to success as a serial entrepreneur, started in 2003, where I built my first e-commerce business, I've worked with other businesses. So I understand the pain points. I understand the challenges. I understand, as an underrepresented woman, the lack of support and just the knowledge that's not given to you, especially when you've grown up in an environment where entrepreneurialism, being a businesswoman, owning my own business, running a team, being a leader, understanding how to market, sales, operations, it's not second nature to me. And it doesn't matter that I've got a degree or I worked in the corporate world, nothing can really prepare you for starting your own business and getting to that point where you have made it viable and profitable and it can pay you what it needs to pay you. OK, so within this time, I'm also the founder of NN Inspirational Gifts, which is an e-commerce site. And that journey is really what brought me to failing my way to success of really learning how to sell online because I've got an e-commerce site myself. So I'm not someone that is going through lessons, training and coaching, and I don't know what it is to have a digital product or service. So NN Inspirational Gifts, I sell physical gifts on Amazon and through my own e-commerce site. I'm also the founder of Women in Digital Business, which is a service where I coach, train um, and mentor women to really build up their businesses to get them profitable. And that, that business model is online and digital because that's what gives us freedom. That's what gives us flexibility. Digitalization means that we can now find our customers everywhere, but not only can we find them everywhere, we can also work when it suits us. Um, so I've been featured in various places, but I don't want to bang on about me, um, not really my bag, but just in case any of you don't know who I am, that's who I am. Um, but what I would say about my journey is that it always wasn't this, oh, I'm a business coach and consultant. You know, I've got my own e-commerce um, store. Yes, that's where I am now. But boy, it was a long journey of failing my way to success. So I quit my job 17 years ago, started to build my own business, went bankrupt. Um, from there, I actually formed a cleaning business. Um, wasn't much of a big startup. I was literally answering the phone. Uh, marketing and then turning up to people's house to clean but I built that business from 500 pounds to over half a million turnover before selling it um, so I do understand um, what it is to have you know real costly mistake stakes I'm experienced with that um, I know what it is to struggle to get sales I know what it is to struggle to build a sales funnel or a sales formula or just that campaign or marketing strategy or sales strategy depending on your business model to actually really become viable and bring the money in the door 
I know what it's like to invest your last amount of money in a business or have no investment whatsoever and have to really try and get visible and get clients and get customers on either a shoestring budget or getting money to do it. And then you still don't get the results that you want. But six years ago, um, that changed and that changed with a growth plan that I developed um, where it really does look at analysing where you are at the moment identifying all the half-built bridges because let's face it as entrepreneurs especially women we can get really stuck in just keep trying new things that shiny object syndrome and then never being able to um, complete any of them so you're just constantly looking for these aha moments or you're looking for this formula that's going to drag you out of the pit of where you are but you're never really finishing what you started you know, one minute it's Facebook, next minute it's like, oh my God, TikTok's out, let me start, you know, doing stories. Then it's like, I've got to do Facebook advertising, let me get the budget together and advertise. Oh, you know, my product isn't for this marketplace, I need to change something else in it. And it just keeps going, we keep changing, waiting for that big aha, and it doesn't uh, material, when it doesn't materialise, we just keep finding something new. So the growth plan that I put together, it kept me on track um, to really optimise um, for results. Um, it made me have to analyze, score what I'm doing. You know, all of you, whether it's social media or any element of your marketing, um, whether it is engineering, whether you're a freelancer, you're a designer, um, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, what business you've run, you've got to look at your business and figure out what is working. What am I good at? What am I not good at? What needs to be improved? What's my goal right now? Is it leads? Is it money? I've got no brand. You need to think about where you are and really look at the results because if you don't track the results you're going to end up making decisions based on assumption and you don't want to be that you want to be able to build out a foolproof um, plan for your funnel and scale to make sure you get the revenue that you've set so if your goal is I need this amount of staff on this amount of salary. I need to pay myself X amount. This is what I need to run my business. This is the cost that it is. Well, in the first instance, that's what you've got to make. And your growth plan should be centered around that goal. When we first start business or even when we're in business and we're doing something new, for those of you that have got established businesses, you know, the method of marketing that you're using might not be as lucrative and as bringing in as much as it did before. So sometimes we can just get so... <clears throat> focused on you know I've got to get here that we end up doing crazy things like discounting prices way too much or you know devaluing our products and services and that's not what the problem is so um, to get to where I am I had to learn how to really think strategically and that's what I want you to do as we go through the lessons today any of my training that you listen to whether it's looking at social media advertising sales funnels what's your customer value journey content marketing there's so many elements of this it's about being strategic in your approach and that's the delivery style that we take at women in digital business which is why all the training that we deliver is great value because it's very strategic. There's a framework behind everything that we do because without a plan, you plan to fail. I can make this sound sexy and exciting, but and you might feel great and think, oh, that was a good training, but then you walk away and how do you actually implement that into your own business? That's what's missing. And that's what we do well, not just me, the whole team at Women in Digital Business. So the mompreneur life going on there, you know, working my way up. There's a lot of things that I learned to put this growth plan together. Um, I'm going the wrong way. So Women in Digital Business empowers underrepresented women to really build six to seven figure um, digital businesses through a strategic uh, marketing system, the same marketing system that I use. Um, I got to a stage where I got tired of just working and being on a good salary, meaning I was a slave to myself. And I realized that I needed to break that mold and get into that six, seven figure bracket. I needed to get there. Otherwise, what's all this for? I might as well just go into a high paid job because I'm working all the hours. I don't get any benefits for being in a well-paid job. I was just a slave to myself. So women in digital business is all, all about getting to that seven figures. So today, in preparation to helping you get to those seven figures, we're going to cover the major social platforms. We're going to look at the new social media players in the game, and we're going to look at the four critical mistakes every business makes. Um, and we're going to look at the social media success cycle and also looking at social media KPIs. 
So like I said, women in digital business is all about strategy. So I'm not going to go through with you, you know, how to create a story, how to put your content planner together. These are all things that are pretty much state of standard quo within social media marketing. You don't need me on a webinar to take you through that. Makes sense. What I want you to do is to start to look at social media from a very strategic point of view and look at it as return on investment. And I also want you to humanize your whole social media marketing strategy. People do not hang out on social media to be sold to. You know, a lot of times people uh, hang out on social media for, you know, um, fear of missing out, um, to figure out, to see what's going on, um, to be inspired, to, you know, have a laugh, have a joke, to see what can help them be better or do better in life, to look at things that are controversial, to get information. It's a news feed. It's so many different things. But people do not hang out on social media to be sold to. So one of the biggest things I want you to pick up today in your strategy is whatever you've learned today, you need to make sure that you go away and you humanize it. You understand who your audience is. You understand the content that you're putting out. Um, we do a fantastic training on content marketing. So for those of you um, that don't follow me on YouTube, please make sure that you do. I'll put all these links in the chat afterwards, but it's simply just Natalia Nicholson on YouTube. And there's a lot of training in there. And the content marketing really puts things into perspective because I'm going to be honest with you, your digital marketing plan, your social media, um, it's not going to be successful if you do not understand who your audience is and who you're talking to, because it's going to mean the content that you're putting out on social media is not going to be landing with your audience we are in the digital age and you are digitalizing. However, you need to understand that you have to be able to humanize this technology. You have to be able to use your smartphone, use your laptop, use your tablet to create personal relationships, almost like when we used to see people and you could look, see, touch, you know, dealing in food, taste, the five senses. So you have to try and humanize what you're doing. So these are the core things that I really want you to bear in mind as we're going through. So part one, let's look at the major social media platforms. Some of you might be surprised that Facebook actually still ranks at the top. Um, as much as people feel like it is a dying social media um, channel, well, actually it has 2.4 billion active users per month. And a lot of that is because it's advertising is so successful because you can reach your audience through interest. So if you understand who your customer avatar is and who your audience is through their likes, their dislikes, what they're interested in, who they follow, what type of person they are, you can target them by interest. Whereas something like Google AdWords or search engine optimization, you're very much targeting through keywords of what they're searching for on the internet. So Facebook to this day is still a huge platform. That whole young people don't use it, it's only for parents, it's a dying trend the figures speak for itself. So before you're quick to erase Facebook and say, I'm not doing Facebook, you know, have a, have a think about that and put that into perspective. And again, try not to make assumptions. It's really important in all elements of this digital world that you are tracking the analytics. If you are using social media already, one of the first things I want you to go and do is look at the analytics. So whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, they all give you insights. Go and look at those insights. Instagram, 1 billion monthly active user, users. For how new Instagram is, that's phenomenal. And that's simply because the world's gone more visual. People love video. People also love lifestyle. You know, the whole pop culture. There's so many different cultures of melting pots that have come to the forefront of, um, of the mainstream world. And that's why you've even got things like E! Entertainment, for example, that covers such an array of things. Um, diversity, different nationalities are seen. People want to aspire to be um, better, bigger. Um, Instagram is just such a great visual tool. You know, if the influences, it's been great. It shows the lives of so many different people that you might want to aspire to or be like, and you can build communities where visually you can see that you are related to. Okay, I'm a woman of colour. I love, there are so many followers that I've got on Instagram that show me people of colour doing really, really well. And I love looking at that feed every night, just seeing what they're doing. Because I think, yay! <laughs> um, so Instagram's very much a visual lifestyle community. Twitter, some people say, you know, Twitter's nearly dead. Clearly not. It has 386 million monthly users, 
what I would say about Twitter, it's very much become a playground for celebrities or people who influence. Um, a tweet doesn't last very long. It lasts for a matter of minutes. So if you're someone of importance or you're some type of celebrity, it's great for you to put all your thoughts and tweets out. Or maybe your business is based on news feeds. You might have a betting shop. You might report, have a radio station. I've actually had a client before that had a radio station that used to give all the results of football. Twitter's great because that information was very for the actual now because there's football matches every few minutes worldwide. Um, maybe not every few minutes, but, you know, definitely hourly and daily. Um, LinkedIn, 250 million active users. So you need to think about, OK, where is my audience hanging out? And I don't want you to guess. <laughs> that is what I would say. I want you to actually either do the research or if you're on these um, platforms already, go and look at your insights for them to tell you which one are you on. Because one of the advice I'm going to give you is that you do not need to be on all of them. You might have presence in all of them, but do you need to have a strategic plan on every single one of them? No, because it's just a lot. If you're going to do that, plus then you've got building funnels out and landing pages, then you've got to be building lead magnets, um, then you've got to be putting content out on all of them. It's a lot. And we read and consume so much information. We think we have to be doing it all as startups and small businesses, but we don't have that type of budget or resource. So we need to scale down to really be able to monetize and reach our goals. And once you've monetized, start getting bigger and bigger. Not this gunshot approach or let me just do it all. You're burnt out, you're tired and you're not being strategic about anything. So you're not gonna get the results. So let's look at Facebook, a bit of a deep dive. You know, Facebook reaches 60.6 .6 of internet users. That's a lot, okay, that's over half. Um, 17, imagine that, $17.44 billion in ad revenue in quarter one of 2020. Um, again, that's what I said to you, Facebook, um, there's people that might not hang out on Facebook, but they reach their audience through Facebook. And social media definitely tends to be more for businesses that um, are building a tribe, a community or educating their audience. If your audience is looking for you, you know, it might be that really you want to be more focused on search engine optimizations. So when we look at engineering, what you're offering within engineering, that's going to be something that your client wants and needs and they're going to be looking for you. However, you might use social media to learn and find out more about your audience. So even though you might be in engineering, What's to say that the people that engineer aren't using Facebook because they like going snorkeling and diving when they're on holiday and they're sharing pictures and talking to people? Um, just because you're in a business to business field, sometimes, you know, people don't turn up to these type of webinars thinking, yeah, but I'm business to business. If I had a pound for how many times that I used to hear that, especially in my Google days, it was like, wow, we're still human. These are still people. And where Facebook actually does attract more of an audio, audio, um, older audience, if that's where your audience is hanging out, you might not sell to them on that channel, but that channel might be really worthwhile you branding and doing stuff on to conversate with them and engage with them to learn more about them. So social media isn't always just about the return on investment. Social media is a great place for you to find out more of your audience. If you know that social media is not the place to monetize, you have to ask yourself, what would be the need of social media for you? And social media is a great place for you to find out more about your competitors, but it's a great place for you to build a tribe and a community and engage. Because when you engage with your audience, what are you doing? You're finding out more about them. The less assumptions you make on decisions within your business on how to get more leads and sales, the better. So if you can have a social channel that finds out more about your audience, well, that's going to let you know how to position yourself and how to build out a funnel that's going to get you the traffic leads and conversion. OK, you're not relying on business reports. You're not relying on your assumption. Um, and for those of you that have got customers, also make sure that you're reaching out to them and asking them. So 65% of active Facebook users are 35 and under. Um, so it's a good amount. So this whole myth of, oh, it's for my mum, it's for my grandparents, as some young people would say. Well, not really, because it's 35 and under. But it's still a nice split on Facebook to be able to find a range of your audiences. 
So 90% of Facebook users prefer mobile over desktop. And I would say that social media in general. So again, if you look at your industry and you understand who your target audience is, one of your questions should be, when are they even hanging out on social media? You know, these are the things that you hear online all day long within your content strategy. And I didn't want to build out a training that is going to be telling you things that you already know. I want you to look at things really differently in today's training and look at it strategically. Why are you using social media? Why are you using the different channels? And hopefully as I go through each one, it should be making you think, you know what, this one's more for me over that one. Do I really need to be doing anything on Instagram if, you know, anything we do isn't visual? Okay, so as of 2019, the average Facebook user spends 58 minutes a day on the platform. As of 2018, 78% have discovered a product via Facebook. Okay, so this is a platform that, you know, it's got a marketplace you can sell on, you can educate on, you can build a tribe on. So maybe this is your, this is where your audience is hanging out. And if you look at the stats, you've definitely got leeway of finding customers there. Even, you know, whether um, I like using the example of engineering because I want to show that social media is for every single sector. It's not just for lifestyle products. It's not just for millennials. It's not just for those of you that are into design. Um, it's or you know, health products. It's not it's absolutely for social media is for everyone. So again, even when you're looking at engineering, you have to ask yourself, where is my audience hanging out? And what do people like within engineering or dislike? Maybe it's a quiz game of finding out, um, you know, how the brain works to be able to build things. And are they suitable to be a, um, some type of construction manager or something? There's things that you can test the market with. I'm kind of throwing things off the um, off the top of my head, but it's just to get give you an idea of what I mean by really connecting with your audience. You don't need to sell your engineering services, but what you can do is tap into the interests of who your buyer is and what they like doing um, and the type of mindset they have and whether you want to throw in a quiz, whether you want to throw in case studies, whether you want to um, throw in factual information that you know that they're going to like. Those are the things that you would post and pull up to try and get comments to find out more about them. And that applies to any of you. OK, so, you know, your business should be on Facebook. Facebook is a major, major platform. But again, I just want you to ask yourself, are you going to monetize on Facebook? Is this a platform that you can grow and use advertising or will you be using it for branding because your audience is looking for you? Do you need to educate your audience to let them know that you are there? Or is your audience looking for you for um, keywords? And that should help you determine, okay, are you on there to get sales or are you on there for brand awareness and to learn more about your audience and actually engage with them and be able to nurture your audience and drive your leads there so you can nurture them there too. But Facebook is a huge platform and please let's not forget that Facebook owns Instagram. Um, so it's not just that your business should be on, it could be that it could be on one or the other. So Instagram, 18 to 24 year olds make up the biggest group of active monthly users. Um, 50%, 51% female, 49% male users. Some of you might find that surprising, thinking that it's more for women. It's pretty much an equal split. Um, it's 18 to 24 year olds, 60% log in at least once daily so they tend to log in more than say facebook 21 percent log in once a week uh, and 16 percent log on at least once a month so you've got a large amount of people that are logging onto this platform multiple times within the day the average time i spent on instagram is 53 minutes so it's only second behind facebook but actually people are logging on more than once 83% of Instagram users have found new products or services on Instagram, which is a huge amount. So Instagram can be really, really great for that side hustle business. Um, whether you're a mompreneur, whether you want to test the market, it's really, really great for building e-commerce where you don't have to have a website. You don't have to be on Amazon and you can actually just find your audience and sell to them and drive them to Instagram and do everything there. So 83% is a huge amount. So you could actually use this platform to operate your business from, as of Facebook as well, to be fair. But obviously, Instagram is very visual. It is very lifestyle based. So it's easier to feature your product there because as you scroll down that feed, 
if you've got a good headline, a good visual and a good video, boom, that could just lead straight to a sale. 80% of Instagram users decided to buy a product based on an influencer using the product or a friend they follow. So Instagram works really, really well for influencer marketing. Um, when no one knows who you are, your brand should really, you need to brand yourself first before your business. People buy people. And if people don't know who your business is, once they know who you are, you represent your business. Your business is born out of you. You know, Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Coca-Cola. These were all people that came, Henry Ford. <laughs> these are all people that existed and their brand was an extension of them. And as that brand grew, that brand then became its own entity by itself. And the founder had then its own separate brand and the business their separate brand. But in the beginning, when no one knows who you are, you need to make sure that you have your own personal brand. For those businesses that, you know, are bigger and, you know, are corporates or large organizations turning over a lot that have never had any digital um, presence at all and maybe the CEO you know, no longer exists because that business is old, they would use something like an influencer to be able to say, you know what, oh my gosh, have you tried this? And sometimes when we think of influencers, um, we very much think of a certain type of person. It's someone that's very lifestyle based, looks perfect, um, and that's changing. You're starting to see a lot more influencers that rep represent different people. And I think influence marketing isn't just for Instagram anymore as well. Um, if you've got the top companies um, or you've got a guru within your marketplace that is endorsing what you do, that is also a form of influence marketing by putting that out on social media. So bonus is that it's owned by Facebook. So for creating ads for Facebook, you can also create ads for Instagram, um, as well as the ad studio as well. Um, so Instagram, it's a lifestyle. It's about images. It's definitely about videos. Videos get more visibility. You shouldn't really be using anything more than 10 hashtags, if you want me to be honest with you. But choose one. Choose no more than three and really get to know them. OK, you don't want to be doing that all. So if your market's on Instagram, you should be, too. This whole notion that, um, you know, if your target audience is on one of the social media platforms and you're not really putting out content that would connect with them or you're not putting out much content or you're not consistent, you can't expect your audience to pay you any attention. So if your market is on Instagram, you should be a full Instagrammer yourself, if that makes any sense doing what you do, showcasing your authority, your brand, putting out content that connects with your audience fully on Instagram so you become visible to them, okay? You shouldn't be choosing any social media channel and just advertising on it, for example, without you having a presence on there as well. You know, if your audience is there, you should be there as well. Um, LinkedIn, more than 70% of active users are outside of the US, which is amazing. Because for many tools, um, it's always um, the USA um, dominated. It's also a great way for the US market. I think we've got someone here from the US. It's also a great way for the US market to be able to trade internationally and come out of the um, US. Um, the internet allows us to be able to trade internationally, and it's great. Most of my clients do not actually come from the UK, and the internet has made that possible. Um, but LinkedIn is amazing for business to business marketing and content distribution. It's a great way to get a following. It really is where Facebook was in 2011, where organically you can build a really good following um, and loyalty and be able to sell. You know, 80 percent of business to business leads come from LinkedIn. 90 million LinkedIn users are in senior level influencer job positions. 63 million LinkedIn users are in decision-making job positions. So these are, if your target audience is in LinkedIn, especially if you are business to business, um, you know, especially if you are in such a field of, oh, it doesn't matter what field you're in, you can, if you're business to business, you get to establish yourself as an authority. So imagine if you could produce a newsletter every month, every week. Imagine if you could put posts out, you're commenting on what's going on in the marketplace. You are now positioning yourself as the go-to, as an authority um, within what you do, which means people are going to notice you for when they need to use your services. You know, LinkedIn has over 30 million companies worldwide active on the site. And actually, it's a business to business site. They are very, very active. We find most of our consultancy clients through LinkedIn and building meaningful relationships through there.
So, you know, LinkedIn does definitely work, especially if you're business to business. It's a great place to network and hang out. So if you are business to business, this is definitely the place for you. Um, Twitter, the platform is for social listening. So 63% of all Twitter users worldwide are between 35 and 65 which might surprise some of you actually. So it's definitely something for where people say Facebook's an older audience, it's definitely more so Twitter. 500 million tweets are sent out per day. 40% of Twitter users carry out a purchase after seeing it on Twitter, which is a huge amount. And I think um, a lot of that comes from, like I said, there's a lot of celebrities, a lot of verified accounts on Twitter that, you know, once they've endorsed something, um, you know, it will just push the sales up. Now, Twitter is a number one platform for discovery with 79% of people on Twitter seeking to discover the newest trends because influencers, authorities, trendsetters, celebrities, go-to gurus, when they say something in Twitter, everybody else follows, it's the Pi Piper. So time spent in on ads on Twitter is 26% higher than any other platform. And you tend to find that people that use LinkedIn tend to actually use Twitter a lot as well. There's a crossover there, which is why when you're posting on LinkedIn, you can automatically um, post on um, Twitter. Some of you might be thinking, Twitter's not for my business. Um, we don't use Twitter, it's not for our business, but I tell you what I do use it for that it's good for, is keeping an eye out on the authorities in my market sector, keeping an eye out for trends, especially being in the digital world and the technology world, trends are forever changing. So being kept keeping up to date with what the market leaders are saying is a great way for me to keep on top of what's going on, thoughts, opinions, what's new, what's not, what's working, what is um, looking at my competitors. It's a really great way to do research. So if you want to interact with customers in real time, because like I said, a tweet only lasts like a few minutes, Twitter is for you. You don't want to do them all. So those are the main social media channels. But there are so many more than that now. We've got the new players in the marketplace. So we've got WhatsApp now owned by Facebook. WhatsApp has 2 billion monthly active users. Um, WhatsApp groups are really, really popular. Um, in developing parts of the world, we use WhatsApp a lot to be able to communicate with our customers, um, especially for those of you that are in Kenya or Nigeria, because it's a great way to be able to send messages, um, to create groups, to create a community, to create engagement, to create a news board, to keep um, you know, your community group customers informed customer services, chat bot, rather than having a chat bot built on your site, a lot of organizations that are saying, what's that the problem? Even Virgin Atlantic, the airline, um, I was on there the other day having to do customer service and there was the option to speak to someone on WhatsApp. Um, so this is becoming a real powerful tool. We all know about TikTok, <laughs> um, that they say is all for the young people, but 800 million monthly users. Um, TikTok is growing at a phenomenal rate and really, really working well with Instagram as well. Um, the Netflix said, network acting funny here. I hope you can send us a recording after the class. Thank you. Um, what we do is we will not be sending the recording, but this will get uploaded onto YouTube in the coming weeks. So make sure you all log on to um, YouTube and the marketing corner. We're here every other week. So uh, make sure you're signed up to us because you'll get an email alert or you're in our Facebook community. Um, Snapchat. 398 million active users. So this is the new frontier of social media marketing. These are the channels that some people will say are for generation um, Zen, generation Y. Um, you know who your audience is, so you need to figure out where are they hanging out. It doesn't matter whether it's the new frontier, it's the old social media, it just doesn't matter. Um, you know, where are they hanging out? Um, and obviously one of the ones... Um, that I didn't hit on, but it's a part of Google, is YouTube. Um, and YouTube is a little bit different as a social uh, media marketing because it, it does sit in between the two. Um, YouTube is great for um, search engine because it's owned by Google. If you search for something in the search engine or keywords, YouTube will flag you a video. It's not social in a sense where it's really, really interactive, even though it's becoming that way. 
uh, there's a lot of new features about um, YouTube and YouTube is definitely going to be the channel that we're going to kick ourselves and think, oh, I should have just gone in there early. Um, you know, you can just do such great um, paid advertising on there. But today we're talking about social media and being social. Uh, but it doesn't have that interaction like the other channels in case you're wondering, okay, where's YouTube? But YouTube is like having your own television. So it really is great for building a community. It's just that the engagement isn't like um, the other social media platforms in having the two-way communication there, but we are going that, that, that way with it. And with YouTube, you really need to try your best to get to a thousand subscribers and 400 hours to unlock all the features of it as well. But hey, you can have your own TV station for free. So let's bear that in mind with um, YouTube. So don't be attracted to the shiny new thing. If your target audience is not on these platforms, don't spend money on that platform. Don't be putting together these big content strategies on these platforms if your audience is not there. I say pick one to three. So whether that is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, WhatsApp, there's other places like Slack, um, Slack sorry, Reddit. You shouldn't really be more, no more than three where you've got a real content strategy and you're trying to reach your audience. You might open up a social media account on all of them and you might post once in a while or just have a brand presence on there. But which one to three will you use to really get return on invest investment and be present on? Remember what I said, if your audience is hanging out on Instagram, you should be too. You should have presence. You should be doing the things that you like seeing on that platform. OK, so what I want to look at is, like I said, I don't want to go over the run of the mill things that you learn about social media all the time, which is how to put a content strategy together. You know, when to post, what are your goals? You are business owners and you are trying to make more money. Um, this is something that is all over the Internet and you, you know, a lot of it, you know, and I could give you a refresher that makes you think, oh, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that. Yeah, I just need, you know, that's a really good piece of advice, but I know this. I really want you to look at this strategically, okay? So we don't want you treating social media as a one-way street. You shouldn't be shouting into a void. So does that make sense? You shouldn't be doing all this work to put together a social media content, putting videos together, graphics together, writing posts. This, this stuff takes time. <laughs> And when you're not getting the results that you want, it's come on, who here has felt disheartened by just continuously posting on social media and just not getting the results? You know, literally, it's like you've got a megaphone and it's like every day you've got something to say, but it's just a one day street. You shouldn't be shouting into a void. Instead, you should be focusing on creating opportunities for dialogue with your customers. If you are not getting the engagement, something's wrong. You're going to have to change your content strategy. So with social media comes needing to understand content marketing. Content is what's going to connect you to your customers to give that human to human experience that I've spoken about so far. Social media isn't just about posting three times a week and getting consistency, making your brand visible. Sometimes I see videos online and sometimes I will speak, I will, I will see the biggest influencers, people on seven figures, just talking on the internet, giving people a false sense of security. Yes, I said it and I'm not taking it back. Um, it's giving people a false sense of security. It's selling people this dream that if you're consistent and you've got a good brand and you make yourself visible, it's going to happen for you. Well, I've been that person that has been doing that over and over again for years and years and years. And it did not bring me to six, seven figures. You have to learn how to connect with your audience and get the engagement. If you can't, if you're not connecting to your audience, more than likely, and it's happened to me, that's not your audience or you are not offering them a solution to a problem they've got. There is a, a miscommunication between what you're offering and who, who it's for. And you need to fix that. So these are the foundation things that you need to do before really your social media is going to become successful. And that's why when we started this, I said to you, understand who your audience is. It's the biggest thing ever. And it's the thing that the biggest companies that turn over a million plus down to a startup that is in a minus figure just keeps overlooking. 
who is your audience? It's such a basic question. But if you don't answer that and you don't get into the head of who you're selling to, it just means when you're trying to socialise, you're not going to socialise. It's like pulling a club night on and playing house music, but the people you've invited don't like house music because they prefer reggae. Um, <laughs> uh, for want of a better analogy. Um, someone's just asked oh, so they've got to go um, was a wonderful event oh no problem at all they want to know my YouTube channel Gem can I ask you to just um, go onto YouTube if you type in Natalia Nicholson my YouTube channel will come up and if you could paste it into the chat I would really appreciate that so Kimberly can get it before she goes so just hang on a sec Kimberly and we will post the YouTube channel on there so you need to provide value first. Um, so often um, then creating multiple touch points for communications with your customer, um, you need to give value. And it's something that even in the UK market, I find that we struggle with a lot is actually being able to give value away. Um, I give value away in everything I do because I know my stuff and I know what I'm doing and I believe in it. Um, so I've got no problem in terms of giving value, but you don't want to jump straight to the sell. It's another mistake a lot of businesses make. Um, you get someone's attention. You've done really well with the striking headline image in the video and you've actually got their attention. And rather than waiting for them to engage to learn more about them, you just want to jump straight into bed with them. It's about building relationships. It's no different to when you meet someone. You meet someone, you know, there's some type of connection, whether it's your eyes meet, um, something happens, there's an energy, you know, from there, you might exchange numbers from there, you know, you might go for a coffee, you might speak on the phone, you might WhatsApp, you might message, you might email, you build. And as you build, you build trust. And you think, okay, this isn't a psychopath that's going to kill me. Maybe I can go out for dinner. Um, you go out for dinner. It builds. It's no different to a relationship and breaking down the laws of intimacy. You don't want to jump straight into bed. OK, people aren't looking for one night stands. You need to nurture. So if you've got someone's attention on social media, provide value, nurture. Your content should be 80 percent educational, 20 percent sales. Remember that 80 20 rule. It's really important. One of the biggest secrets to successfully selling online is actually understanding that you have to build relationships through technology. And I call it technology meets psychology. It's about bringing the closeness relationships and connection, but doing it through technology. And you figure out, but doing that and the vehicle you use to do that is content marketing. It's the content, it's the copy that you write, it's what you say on a video, it's the graphics that you put together. You know, these are all the things that you need to get right before doing a deep dive into social media and saying, hey, it's not working. Um, one bit connects to connects to the other. Oh, mistake three. I've clicked the next slide. Um, failing to tie social media marketing to your overall marketing goals. You need to align your social media efforts with your content marketing and promotions. So, you know, we're called NNN Inspirational Gifts. All of our gifts have got inspirational messages on the front. Um, but if I then, on my social media channel, and just to let you know, I've done this, so I'm not even trying to be patronising. Um, if all I'm doing is only ever educating about candles, what happened to my business in the first instance when we launched, I got a huge following of candle lovers. Yes, I do sell candles and they are my hero product, but actually our brand is all about well-being, uplifting other people, um, sharing people's successes, wanting to uplift, self-love, self-care, relaxation. You know, sometimes you want to send a bunch of flowers, you want to put that special message in there, and you don't necessarily want to send flowers, you want to maybe send another product. You know, we're very clear on what our brand is, but our hero product is candles. And what happened was, because of all our social media was just about candles, vegan, natural, wick, um, sustainable ethical yes we are all those things because we wasn't talking about anything else the whole inspirational gift thing just got lost and we started to be known as a candle seller we're not we're an inspirational gift seller so make sure that your social media aligns to your overall goals sometimes we're trying to serve so many different customers we confuse ourselves and social media will say something completely different to what our website's saying you know, you and this is why building out a funnel is so important. You have to keep yourself aligned. You have to understand who your audience is. You need to understand 
you know, what's the entry point offer? What's your core offering? What's your downsell? What's all your other products? And who is it that needs them? And make sure that you are pumping the same message, whether it's on your website, your landing page, your lead magnet and your social media sites. And this is where branding comes into play. There shouldn't be any disjointment because if there is, you, you, you're just, you're just not, your customer won't get it. You might get it, but your customer won't. And it's funny, on my mastermind, um, I'm a part of Digital Marketeer, Ryan Dias's mastermind. Yesterday, we were talking about this. You know, how many of you have seen coaches and consultants that will say things like, and if you um, one-time offer, you can buy our... Um, blah, 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 used to be $10,000. Now it's only $10. And you're never going to see this offer again. And then two months later on social media, you see the offer again. W what does that do? It's like a child that you keep threatening to do something to do or discipline them and you don't do it. That child now knows, oh, whatever, I'm not listening to her. She's not going to do it anyway. Um, you know that you're not going to act and you haven't created urgency because you're going to keep bringing that special offer out. How many of us, I do it all the time where I'll see a special offer even for a store and I think, oh, they always come out with that. Um, here in our supermarket, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's often have 25% off um, all clothing and I get my children's school clothes from there. Um, it's not like it says this one time we got 25% off. So I always know that offer's coming back. So just make sure that all your goals align to whatever channels that you're on within social media. Um, mistake number four that a lot of businesses make, treating social media marketing as a single discipline. Um, actually, it's composed of four equal parts. Social media is not just one single discipline that you're going to use. You're going to get to a point where you might need to do social media marketing and it's paid. That's different to social media. Social media is used a lot really for branding, for engagement and finding out more about your audience. Like I said, people don't hang out on social media to be sold to. If you're going to go down the paid marketing, it's actually social media marketing. OK, it's not just one single discipline. It's not like oh, how good your social media. And remember, it depends on what platforms and mediums you're using as well. Makes sense. So if you're using you know, for instance, Twitter and LinkedIn, those are two different disciplines. You can't use the same um, content strategy for Twitter that you would for, for LinkedIn. They're going to be different. So social media is not something in isolation. It's a part of digital marketing. OK, just like we've got traditional marketing and you might have had TV advertising, radio, magazine, newspapers, and you can advertise in different mediums. Well, digital marketing's also got different mediums and vehicles. Social media shouldn't be just treated or your campaign as one single discipline. It's a part. OK, it's a part of your digital marketing strategy and plan. And sometimes we can get lost in the creativity. Essentially, marketing is a series of events where you promote to get sales. And we always want to separate marketing from sales because we see sales as some sales team with a whole load of people on the phone saying, buy, put the phone down, buy, put the phone down. And we say, oh, I'm not a salesperson. Sales is like a swear word. You still think of this greasy salesman or you think of just being bugged all the time by someone that's a bugaboo that just won't leave you alone. Well, marketing is a part of sales. Marketing is what leads generation. And sales is when you convert into a sale. It's not a swear word. It's imperative for your business to survive and to be able to become pro profitable. So don't fall into those mistakes. So part four, the social media um, success as we start coming to an end. So using social media for marketing. Um, we've got the customer value journey. Um, there's a five day challenge, by the way, guys, if you haven't done it, please do. Uh, for those of you that haven't joined our Facebook group, please make sure you go to Women in Digital Business and you join our Facebook group. Um, Gem, actually, if I could ask you just to put the Facebook group link for um, just Facebook, um, going to groups, Women in Digital Business and put it in the chat, I'd be really grateful for that. So using social media for marketing within the customer value journey, um, you really want to be able to write a strategic plan of how you're going to take your customer through a journey from awareness to engaging to subscribing to you. So you've got their details to making a sale, which is entry point offer, onboarding and exciting them, taking them up an ascension ladder where you're upselling um, to understanding how to get repeat customers and get people to buy from you 
to having an actual affiliate program where there's some type of joint venture and people are paid to promote you and you've got some type of business structure to your exit strategy of be it franchising, selling on an affiliate system. You know, you need to map out a plan of how you're going to get to where you need to be using what's called a customer value journey. Um, please do make sure you join the Facebook group because we will be able to give you a challenge where you actually put together your own five day customer value journey if you guys haven't already. So you really want to, in that, generate awareness for your brand and your marketing campaigns. Like I said, you want them to engage with your content. That might be through blog posts, podcasts, social media, and you want to drive them to your website um, or drive them to your landing page. You want your, you want your audience to discover more about you and what interests them. Okay. Um, you know, it's also a testing ground, ground, ground for paid campaigns. What I mean by that, if you use social media right and you're engaging, it's gonna, you're gonna be much more successful with social media paid advertising because you will understand who your audience is. You will know their interests, their likes, their dislikes. You would have got to have known them and speak to them, which means now you can really get successful paid campaigns because you've tested. So social media marketing is very much the awareness and engaging stage in the customer value journey. So social media success cycle, those four elements that you really want to be focused on is social monitoring and listening. Really understand what's going on socially in terms of your marketplace, your avatar within that community, that tribe, what people connect to in terms of what you do. Social influencing. You know, who are people influenced by? What do they want? What are their pain points? What are their challenges? What are their guru? What are they listening to? What's the market saying that they've got a problem with? You know, networking, social networking, finding more people that will buy from you or be a part of your community and getting them to find more people um, like them. So you start networking and building your own community and tribe. And through that becomes influencing what we've spoken about and social selling, because you're listening to what people are saying within the community and the tribe. Um, what influencers are saying, you as an authority, which is now through social means, means that you're actually selling. So that's the cycle of what you really want to do on social media. I really want you to think about what you're doing on social media more strategically, not just I should be posting three to four times a week. Um, this is our avatar. This is our content calendar. We should be posting at 9 a.m. at night. Yes, you need to be doing all that type of stuff. But I really want you to think about how do I connect with my audience and humanize them? And what's the success cycle for our business? What is it that we need to do? You know, you're engaging on there, so you should be monitoring and listening. You should be using analytics to be able to find out more about your prospects. So therefore, you'll make sure that what you're offering them is hitting pain points and challenges. You're not making assumptions. So those are the four things that I really, really want you to dig deep in your social media. Social monitoring and listening. What are you hearing? What's going to make your industry more innovative? What's innov innovative? What's the problems that you're getting from your customers? What could you be doing differently that would make you more successful? Influencing, you know, are you influencing? Are you an authority? Are you a go-to? Are you a guru? If you're not, let's look at the people that are and look what they're doing in your market sector because you should be doing that better. Networking, are you bringing people together to network, again, to see yourself as an authority and also to keep leads warm so you can have a place where you can establish yourself and through networking, when they are ready to buy, they buy from you. OK, um, selling once you've built that rapport up, it's fine to sell now because they now, you know, are listening to you. You're listening to them. You've got influencing going on where you're establishing yourself as an authority. You're giving your competitors a run for their money by looking at what they do, influencing. You've got a group of people, a tribe that are talking to one another. You're networking. So now, hey, you get to sell because you've built that trust up. You've turned down those, torn down those walls of intimacy. So really bear that in mind. Um, social monitoring and listening, um, you know, it's, and it's there. You're, you can respond to customer inquiries, listen for important trends and topics. A lot of people use social media actually to, for their customer services. Um, it's a great way. Um, you know, Twitter is a primary social channel for this. 
um, in the pandemic, you know, here in the UK, the DVLA, which is our driving agency, and they were putting all their queries through Twitter, IKEA. There were so many companies, public sector and private sector, that were using Twitter for their customer service line where people weren't in the call centre, so they couldn't have the volume of staff they used to have. And Twitter provided that problem. So social monitoring and listening is a great way for you to actually carry out your customer services on social channels. You know, with the engineering, if people are on Twitter, what a great way to have to make your customer services of anybody that needs something to put it through Twitter, because now you're starting to learn more of them socially and what they do when they're hanging out on social media. So but moving something on to, um, in customer service onto social platform could be a great way for industries that aren't typically known to be on social media, a great way to break that through. And that's what a lot of public sector organizations did in the pandemic. So a really effective strategy is to use your social media accounts to listen to your customer needs, wants and complaints. A simple checking on your social gives your customers um, a care team and a leg up and pulse on your clients. It keeps you up to date. You get to follow direct competitors, see where they are letting down potential customers, what their pain points are. How well are they doing? How well are they not doing? How good are they doing? Um, you know, are they catering to those needs so you can perform better in all these areas yourself as a business? Feedback, reviews are so important. Think about when you buy off Amazon or so many different sites, the feedback, TripAdvisor, feedback is actually what makes you want to buy. So you getting feedback to improve your products and offers is just better in yourself and you're just better in the amount of conversion that you're going to get. Kes Customers will also feel that you're truly listening to their needs and wants when you answer feedback. Yes, a lot of times it can get annoyed, um, ignored. But if we look at case studies like Avis, Avis is always number two in the car rental market. They went to number one by launching a campaign saying, we know we're only two. Help us get to number one. Tell us you know, what it is you want more of to get to number one. And that campaign is actually what got them to number one. So feedback can be very powerful. That's a brilliant case study in really understanding how feedback can get you ahead. You know, social influencing, just to break it down further, um, as we're coming to an end, establishing authority in your industry by posting and sharing relevant and valuable content. You have to accept yourself as an authority. Okay, so platforms you will do this very well on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube as well, to be fair. OK, effective strategy. People show commitment in two ways. It's either with their time and the, or their money or and their money, should I say. The key is delivering valuable content. When content is valuable, people will spend time with your content. The more people you and the more time people spend on your content, the more they recognize you as an authority in the space but understand who your audience is. You have to understand your audiences to be able to be an authority to them. Your audience will realize you're a valuable resource and they'll continue to engage with your content. So imagine if you're a design, don't feel like because you're a design freelancer, for example, you can't give people design tips because that means that people won't get you in as a freelancer. Actually, no, the fact that you can give away knowledge and how design should be done and what it means within their marketing, it makes them trust you more to commission you. OK, STEM subjects and engineering company, again, if we know how your men, what your company stands for, what you're doing as you manufacture, what you do when you go out on the field and why it's so important to abide by maybe different laws, how to do things. You're not giving away any tips in your business. You're making your audience trust you more by showing that you are good at what you do and why you do it. OK, so your audience with social influence, they will share your content and your brand with their audience if you give valuable content. And this is where content marketing is key. You know, social networking, engaging and building relationships with valuable brands and influencers in your industry, um, because people do listen to influencers. So it's um, endorsement. This is what, you know, sponsorship was once upon a time ago in traditional marketing. So platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, um, and to a point, podcasts and YouTube. OK, um, so effective strategies are starting by sharing valuable content from other industry influencers and brand. And actually, this is a great way to alleviate some pressure off you because now you're repurposing. 
you're re- you can repurpose content, which means you don't have to keep creating it. You know, create a list of brands and experts in your industry you'd like to build relationships with. You know, cr- create your own network with other authorities, influencers, and gurus. Okay, build communication templates and reach out to them um, when they're most active. Um, you know, building partnerships with communities is really, really important. There are so many businesses out there that you might think are a conflict of interest to build a partnership or network with, but actually they're not. Um, let's take, for example, if you was someone that has put a software program together or an app, you know, you teaming up with somewhere that someone or a company that does IT that's technical and hardware, even though you're in the same field, there's no conflict of interest because one's hardware, one's software. And it could be that their audience, um, you know, they might use the hardware company, but actually the, their audience would buy the software that you put together. So networking with that type of organization could be very valuable to both parties. So create mutually beneficial relationships. Focus on what and where your audience will find the most valuable. Sharing tips via Instagram, um, you know, doing lives, doing stories on Facebook, networking, networking with people within your industry and field, networking with other gurus and authorities. And also, like I said before, getting your community who you're following to engage with one another and helping them within their decision making, helping them and problem solving around any problems that they've got. Okay, so social network can come from your own community, it can come from other gurus and authorities in your market sectors, and it can come from other similar market sectors that you could partner up with and have joint ventures with. Social selling, just to give a little bit more of a deep dive, what is it? You know, social selling is about generating leads and sales by connecting a seeking audience with your products and services. Once you've got a tribe, once you've got a community, once you're engaging, you get to now sell without being that dirty salesman, sales being a swearing word, or that, oh, here we go again, I'm being sold to. Um, Again, platforms for social selling, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, effective strategy, focus your social selling efforts on seeker channels. And this is where, you know, YouTube's on here and wasn't on the rest. YouTube's changing. That's why I keep saying YouTube to a point, because it's not a two way engagement channel fully yet, but it's going in that direction. But focus your selling efforts on seeker channels. These are channels where customers and prospects are actively seeking Pacific content. You know, just today, my mum's oil light came on in her car. And the car's just been serviced. And it's like, why is that? What does that mean? What did I do? I Googled it and I looked on a YouTube video. If I can't figure out how to put something together or do something, I go onto YouTube and find the videos. So I'm seeking Pacific content. So that's why with YouTube, you are kind of think Google. Pinterest, the same. I want an outfit made or a dress made. So I go on Pinterest to get the visuals and get ideas. So, you know, social selling is about optimizing your e-commerce brand for social selling, such as connecting your e-commerce catalog to your Instagram business account or your Facebook store. So any of you that might use Shopify, um, you can connect your store to social media channels, which means once you're connected, you have a following, you're engaging, you're trusted by a group of people within a tribal community. Guess what? You get to sell to them and you can sell on the platform, but you have to break down those laws of intimacy. You can't just be getting into bed straight away and just boom, going straight in from the cell from social media. So focus on engaging your audience and speaking to the benefits of your products and services. Okay. Um, so I know we are getting late. So we're coming to an end looking at KPIs um, and we're literally about to finish up. And then I just want to let you know about some amazing stuff we've got going on. So make sure you've got key performance indicators. You need to measure everything you do. Measure, 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 measure. Um, any social media you've got, you've got insights. So number of followers, the impressions, what they're doing, what posts get the most clicks, engagement, like, share, comments. Um, what type of content is it? What type of videos is it? Um, looking at the people that are giving all the likes and shares, what have they got in common? Why is it that they're liking this stuff? You know, look at your KPIs. 
You know, social media isn't just about posting three, four times a week and being great. You need to be able to be a return on investment, whether that's time or money. So whether it's a branding exercise, whether it's getting leads, whether it's keeping leads warm, whether it is to, you know, keep them on social media to build that trust to sell to them, whatever it is, you should have some key performance indicators of what your goals is to use social media and also at all times track track and analyze what you're doing well of okay so that actually brings us to an end so thank you for coming today I know some of you have had to pop off I'd be really grateful to know time wise how many of you this suited um, please please make sure that you join the Facebook group we're going to be sending an email out that will tell you about the Facebook group also, please make sure you follow us on YouTube. There's a lot more training like this one, whether it's around social media, content marketing, sales funnels, customer value journeys, channels. Between the Facebook channel and the YouTube, there's a lot to um, check out and do. Um, but for those of you that really are ready and you kind of want to take things a lot further from where you are and be able to start building out an actual plan, um, there's one of two things. So I'm going to put this in the chat. We have a three day boot camp that's done online um, that's really going to do a deep dive into you understanding who your audience is, what your market sector is. Oh, my screen's going all funny and you might be able. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that it was fluttering all over the place. Um, thank you so much for the information. No problem, um, Dylan. Um, no problem at all. So I'm going to put in a link that will take you to the boot camp. And for the next 24 hours, I'm not even going to bang on about it. You've got 30% off. So it's usually $97. Those that are members, you have access to this already. Um, those of that you are not, um, thanks, Sandra. Always well done. Make sure that you join the boot camp. Those that are members like yourself, Sandra, you've got access to it. But the boot camp is just a brilliant, brilliant place for you to be able to take three days out. And when I say three days, it's not whole days. They're um, a few hours long to really discover your marketplace, who your audience is. Um, how to connect with them, the copywriting that you should be using, looking at the marketplace, looking at the bottom line figures, like how are you going to maximize profit? How will you reach the goals of the numbers that you set out with the customers that you've got? Making sure you're not leaving money on the table. OK, um, it, it's, it's, it's a really deep dive that strategically it will get you on track to understand, OK, this is what I need to be doing. It's going to really make you think about your services, your offering, your marketplace and sector and your audience and really do a deep dive to really put some worksheets together and work with me to answer those questions, to make sure that what you're learning through Women into Digital Business, you can actually implement it. Mm -hmm.